In today's lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to make your grafting wounds a lot stronger. My name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cold plants, and for the first time in decades, I'm having a lot of graft failure. They are grafts that took off with a lot of vigor in spring, and here we are now in midsummer, and the grafts are getting so overgrown that even a bird or a squirrel or something that's landing on that branch is quickly snapping these weak joints. Similar to a broken arm, you would typically splinter it and nurse it as the bones get stronger. And many of you have read that a broken bone can sometimes heal to be stronger than the original bone. And similarly, your graft wounds are typically a lot thicker and reinforced with wood, resulting in stronger wood. And if the plant were to break at any joint along that branch, it typically would not be at the graft union. However, that's a different case in that first year or two. And these lessons in today's lessons are gonna help you to ensure that that grafting wound heals over that first year or two so that the break will never happen at that site. Well, let's get started. Many of you will remember us grafting earlier this year this 10-in-1 fig tree, starting off with the Hilda's Honey Green Fig, and upon it we grafted 10 coveted varieties of figs. Unfortunately, a couple have already fell off. One of them I think I can save, and that's something that we're gonna do together using three methods. One being pruning, the second is splintering, and the third one is sealing, using the Ivory Organic brand products. And I'll explain the importance of using that compared to a latex or tar-based product, uh, which are inferior, not just in quality, but also the risk of damage to your grafting wounds using those products. First, let me share with you the Hilda's Honey Green Fig. And as you can see, there's figs throughout the canopy. Just about every single leaf here has a fig on it. This one over here even has a double fig. We'll take one of them off so that all the resources in that particular joint goes to support that one fruit. And within it, we've got all these grafted varieties. Over here is my Monstruous. This is one of my favorite strawberry tasting fig varieties. And as we cut through over here, you can see over here is my Martinica Ramada, similar to the Panache Tiger fig. But this one over here ripens with skin that's more purplish dark, but still variegated. Even the bark is variegated, um, not so easy to see as it's so tender. But you can see the vigor in this particular graft um, that we have back here. And as we come through, we can see here is the Tia Pena. This is another um, variety we've grafted right here. You can see the grafting wound and all of the new growth. And if you come back here in the canopy, we've got to, you know, carve this tree out a little bit more so we get some more sunlight to one of the fig hunter varieties here. And I saved the bag that he used to graft it. This is the fig hunter variety number 44, another one of his coveted varieties that he grafted on again several months back and just check out all the new growth on that but i'm sad to share that another fig hunter variety right here one of the most coveted varieties number 270 has broken so this is a lesson i wanted to teach several days ago and you can see that it's hanging on by a thread because it is it's barely hanging on to life but it is very much alive if you take a look down below it's still green and pushing out new growth and the curvature, it's starting to grow back up, but it's on its way down if we don't do something now. And let's first reinforce this broken branch and then reinforce all of our other existing grafts so we make sure that this doesn't happen to your other grafts. Um, as you can see here behind it, this here's a Tia Pena. You can see the grafting wound, it's nice and healthy. The two branches are supporting one another, this here being the rootstock and the scion being the Tia Pena above. Below is the Hilda's Honey Green Fig, and they're happy together. But this is a weak point for the rest of this year and maybe even most of next year too. So reinforcing your grafting wounds is necessary in order to ensure that all of that time, energy, and effort you put into initially grafting your tree isn't lost. As in this case, we're on the verge of losing our Fig Hunter Variety 270. And the other one over here, which we did lose, is the Tiger Panache. Another variegated variety, which you can see is completely dried out. But you can see how beautiful that variegation was before we lost this particular cutting, which was thriving here on our property. 
So many of you remember that when we originally grafted our tree, we used a paper towel method where we used a nylon string and we secured it in place, the scion onto the rootstock, and then we wrapped the entire union with a damp paper towel, a slightly moist paper towel that we then secured with a plastic bag to retain that moisture. And the goal was to hydrate that scion, that grafted wood long enough for it to heal. And as you can see, we've had a lot of grafting successes off of it. Once your graft is taken off and it's actually growing for the next month or two, what you're gonna wanna do is cut that fishing twine off, that nylon string and replace it with something a little bit thicker and softer on the grafted wood. And this is something that would have saved at least two of my grafts behind me. And basically this is a cotton twine and I would basically secure the graft and that could have been enough. Let me share with you the fishing twine and basically the steps we're gonna take now to strengthen our existing grafts. So here we are. This is the original fishing twine we used to graft the Martinica Ramada. We're simply going to remove it like so. You can see how easily and the pressure that's on that twine to come out. And here it goes. The white stuff you see on there is the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard. We're using it to basically keep pests and disease out of the grafting wound, as when you graft, many of you know that there's basically gaping wounds all around it. And to protect the site, we're using the Ivory Organics. As you can see how it's like falling apart, it dries on porous compared to latex and tar-based products allowing for a much healthier plant seal. If you're using latex and tar-based products, that's going to end up trapping moisture behind it and that's gonna rot the underlying wood and graft. So you can see this whole backside is exposed and being sealed basically with that Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, which I'm gonna demonstrate a little further in the video. So here we are with the Broken Fig Hunter variety number 270 and what we are going to do, helpful tip number one, to strengthen your newly grafted fruit trees or any other variety plants you've got grafted is to prune them. And so what we're going to do is simply cut this branch. And typically I would maybe prune it by maybe a third, um, maybe even up to a half. But what I'm gonna do is just because it's hanging on by a thread is I'm actually gonna remove about two thirds of the growth just because it's got so little to hang on to maintain the life. As you can see, as we demonstrated with the um, tiger panache fig, you can see I pruned it significantly, but it still wasn't enough for it to um, continue living as that break was just too significant. I really think I'm gonna be able to save this one. And here we are pruning back about 60 to 70% of the plant. And now we're left with this. So we removed all of that additional weight so we can now hopefully re-strengthen this graft and hopefully still preserve variety number 270 on this Hilda's honey green fig. Along the vein of pruning, let's continue pruning our grafted trees. What's gonna happen now that we removed some of these tips, like you can see here, I've only pruned what, maybe five to 10%. What's gonna happen is it's gonna stunt the growth for the next few weeks as it pushes out new growth. In the meantime, these branches are all gonna get thicker and stronger and basically the green wood is gonna turn brown, which is only gonna further strengthen these grafting wounds. Helpful tip number two is splintering. Just as you would break your own arm, you would want to reinforce it with a splinter. You can use chopsticks to basically reinforce both the rootstock as well as the scion throughout the garden. If you don't have your hands on chopstick, get your hands on any other loose branches such as this fortunately i've got bamboo growing here in our property i can simply create more splinters real easily by removing these side shoots and now i've got this additional wood check out these apricots on my five and one stone fruit tree you can see we've got apricots as you come down the branch just check right here behind it we got peaches and then just around the corner to the peaches, we've got plums and pluots and another variety of peach for a total of five flavors of fruit. Throughout the year, we're also pruning some of the overgrowth. And again, we can be using this wood as splinter wood as well. So now I have all of this wood that can be used to reinforce our grafts within our multi-grafted fig tree. I'm first gonna secure a knot on the root stalk 
secure the scion in place. There it goes. Look how nicely that once fit. Went right back into place. And now we can reinforce it with the splinter wood. Every about one to two months, you're gonna to wanna to replace the splinter as naturally the tree is gonna to continue to grow and expand. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your ties are not constricting the growth between the rootstock and that supported scion wood. We're now gonna continue that process throughout the rest of the tree. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard product. It's OMRI certified for organic commercial orchards as well as backyard growers that are wanting to grow the healthiest plants. As you can see here, the product offers protection against damaging summer sunburn as well as winter sun scald, insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs for organic production and healthier than latex paint and tar based products as we explained before. The product has in it seven natural oils which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary and spearmint and also includes diatomaceous earth which is another insect repellent protection ingredient. And what we're gonna do is simply protect our grafting wounds, keeping pests and disease out of it. If you take a look here real quick, you can see all those nooks and crannies within it. These are all excellent hiding places for pests and disease. And now we're gonna seal it. If you're not interested in the color white, even though white reflects the most light and heat, there's also Ivory Organics makes available colors brown, green, gray, and grayish. We're now going to seal these prune tips as well and we can actually cool off the entire plant which would give us some relief from these hottest days of summer and that's going to give it a good break because plants just like people can suffer from first second and third degree sunburn burns so over here is another gaping wound from the graft this is the back side of the rootstock and we're gonna seal it again, keeping pests and disease out of it. And I'm trying to shove as much of this product into it. In case there's anything in there, it'll smother it and kill it. And it'll also prevent other pests from trying to penetrate this product as well. And again, the product dries on porous, resulting in much healthier plant seal. So together we learned how to make your graft stronger by way of pruning, splintering, and then protecting those grafting wounds using the Ivory Organics 3-1 Plant Guard products. These methods are an excellent way to ensure that your grafting efforts are not in vain about a month or a year later. This is a way to ensure that your grafts are off to an excellent start. By taking these three simple steps, you're gonna help ensure that that grafting site remains strong as it continuously heals over that first year. And by year two, you can pretty much rest assured that that grafting wound is stronger than just about any other point on your plant. So here we are next to the Fig Hunter 270. It's been about a week. You can see a couple more leaves have since dried off and fell from just the stress and the heat. But a couple are hanging on. And better yet, coming a little closer and you can see the buds are starting to push through, indicating that there is definitely life and this is definitely gonna make it. Another question we get all the time is, does the products grow through if you cover the buds with the Ivory Organics products, and the answer is yes, the product dries on porous and any buds will push through the product. And let's take a look at some of the other graphs over here that we have since um, taken care of. Here is the Martinica Ramada, MR. And take a look here. You can see some of the variegation within the stem as well as the fruit. And then look at the tips. You can see they're now pushing new growth as well. And let's just take a look at one more. This one over here, one of my personal favorite, the Monstruous, strawberry flavored fig, and you work your way up. And check out what's happened over here since we've pruned these tips back, protected with the Ivory Organic 301 Plant Guard. Look into these buds and you'll see we've got baby figs. And now that the joint has been reinforced the way we did and taught in today's lesson, we may allow one or two figs to rest more safely than had they not been reinforced in today's lesson. If you found this lesson informative and educational, please give us that thumbs up. Most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.